COVID-19 is here and it's dominating every aspect of our lives. If you've tried to buy anything online that has to do with audio or video streaming, you've probably found that it's back ordered at least a month. So we gotta make do with what you have on hand. In today's video, Jonathan and I are gonna show you how you can tip the scales in your direction to get a better audio and video streaming package using what you have on hand. We may have to get a little creative, but I think we'll be able to show you a few tricks. I'm Jude and this is my sound advice. Before we get started with the audio and video, I want to show you one small but very important item. Go to www.us.ccli.com and start learning about copyright licensing. Anything you stream is going to open you up into copyright issues. So make sure that you are covered. CCLI has done a great job at putting together a package that you as a school, a church, or an organization can use to cover you in the event of a lawsuit. www.us.ccli.com. Check it out. This is the heart of our sound system, the mixing console. All of our audio comes in through these input jacks and then the audio is mixed and then sent out of the output section. So we need to figure out how we can take a good feed out of this machine and send it to our streaming computer. This is our left and our right output. This would feed our sound system. Now everything is balanced according to what we need for our sound system. Two things I hear a lot from churches are, I either have to run my sound system so loud to be able to get enough volume to the computer, or I got to run my sound system so soft so I don't distort the audio going to the computer. So I want to show you a couple ways to get alternate feeds out of your mixing console so you can have separate control. Most mixing consoles are going to have some sort of a record out. So here's just a simple RCA output. This will be a two channel out but it's tied with your left and right uh, outputs here. Next to the record out is gonna be an alternate out. On this mixing console, the Allen & Heath Z16FX, we have a potentiometer that controls the output volume. Here's our alternate out right here. Now we have control of the overall volume that leaves the alternate out. It gets the same mix that's going to the house, but we now have separate control. If we want to take that one step further, we could actually use an auxiliary send post fade and be able to create a whole nother clean mix that goes to our streaming computer. The reason why we might want to do an auxiliary out is because let's say this is our piano. A piano is going to radiate naturally into the room, but it's not going to radiate naturally into your recording or your streaming device. So if this is where we would run the piano for our service, because we're getting live natural sound, and we're also reinforcing that sound just a little bit, we may not have enough volume going to our streaming feed. So if we use a post fade auxiliary send, we're able to create a whole nother mix that's still dependent on what we do on the faders because it is post fade. So if this is my piano and this is where I want it in the house, I'm able to turn that volume up or down in our streaming feed by using an auxiliary send that is post fade. On some of the newer mixing consoles, you'll see a USB send. This is a USB A. So you can buy these adapters, USB C, the USB A, and you can send two channels of digital audio to your computer and then also you can return two channels of digital audio back to your sound system from this one jack. This is going to be the cleanest feed possible. And let's not overlook this simple option. Anytime I install a digital recorder, I'm going to have a compressor, analog or digital, compressing the audio input to the digital recorder. This will help me limit the distortion and give me a nice tight compressed sound. Most of your recorders are going to have a headphone jack. This is a quarter inch stereo headphone jack with a volume control. You can use a stereo cable plugged into this quarter inch jack and feed the input of your camera or your computer 
and with this volume control, you can help adjust the audio input to those devices. Computers are notorious for causing buzzes and hums in your sound system. One of the easiest ways to fix that is to get one of these. It's about a 50 cent jack. It's called a ground lift adapter. Hot, neutral, ground. If we look on this side, we have a hot and we have a neutral, but we don't have a grounding plug. We've got a grounding tab. We break this tab off so it does not ground out with the screw on the outlet plate. And we have now just lifted high voltage ground going to the computer. If you're using a laptop, you can simply run the laptop on battery and not have any grounding issues to worry about. Now let's take this setup, head to the church and meet with Jonathan. So here we have a very basic uh, live streaming setup. Uh, we each have a camera, video interface, and a computer. And this is about as simple as you can get if you're not using the built-in camera of a phone or a webcam of some sort. Um, this is going to get you what I would consider a broadcast quality um, video signal, but with basic hardware. So here we have a camera. Um, this is not necessarily the camera you have to have. Any camera with an HDMI out HDMI output will work. Um, we're outputting at 1080p and then we're going to be going into this um, Blackmagic design. This is called the Intensity Shuttle. Um, this will support up to 1080p 30 frames a second and then that comes out USB 3 goes into the computer. Um, just to show you uh, what we're able to do with this, um, this is a cheap off-brand computer from Walmart for 200 bucks and you can see here there's our tripod um, that we got in focus. But you can see here this software is uh, is working right now. Now what this computer does not have if we go into the settings it does not have a hardware encoder. So what that means basically is when it comes time to stream and start encoding this raw video signal into a lower bitrate signal that could be used over a standard internet connection, it's going to be um, using quite a bit of resources on the uh, system here. So I'm going to start a recording, which is going to do essentially the same thing as a stream. It's just going to save the video to a hard drive versus sending it to YouTube or Facebook or whoever your um, provider is. And you can see here we just jumped up on our CPU from 3% to about 50%, um, which is acceptable. Um, it's not the best, but it's actually working. So if this is all you have, um, you know, a $200 computer can get the job done, which is pretty incredible. So, you know, with everything there, you have your camera, which I'm guessing you probably already have one. Um, if not, whatever the price of that would be. A $6 HDMI cable, um, $150 interface, and a $200 computer, and uh, you're all set to go with the basic setup there. So to touch a little bit on audio, um, if you could imagine um, from this point, this might be the output on your mixer. Um, this particular box, it's not, not relevant to this setup necessarily, but the output on your mixer Basically, you have your, your output of your mixer, your audio rack, whatever you have at your church. Um, you're going to come out of that. Um, in this application or scenario, um, this camera has an XLR input. Um, this particular one's a, a mini XLR. Um, or we have a microphone, 8 inch, 3.5 millimeter um, input there. That's stereo. So if you do have a stereo setup, that would probably be the way to go versus mono here. Um, but depending on your camera and the I.O. that it has, um, you may uh, want to go into the camera directly. That may be the best feed to get the audio injected into your video stream. Um, the second option that you could do if your interface um, has analog audio inputs, um, this particular one has RCA. So in the configuration program on the computer, you would set your audio input instead of being HDMI to be um, RCA. The problem that you may have with this is these are not going to be 
um, professional audio levels, they're going to be quite a bit lower. So the levels you get out of your console may be way too hot and uh, overdrive that. So it'd be something to consider. Um, and then the same thing for the, the three and a half millimeter jack on this camera. If your camera has one, a lot of them on cameras are mic level. And so uh, you may run into some distortion there, even with your console turned down extremely low. So if that were the case, um, with the signal being too hot, uh, you could use something like this. Um, most DI boxes, DI box stands for direct injection. Basically it can take a line level signal and um, knock it down to mic level, or it can be used the other way around, um, depending on depending on your application. This particular one has an attenuator built into it. I think most of them do have that built in. Also, this can eliminate buzzes, um, potentially, if, if the problem is between your console and your, and your camera um, by using a ground lift. Um, and most DI boxes are gonna have all that. This is a, a dual DI box, so you could do a left and right channel on it um, if you're wanting to. Um, the last way that uh, you could get audio into your stream, and this probably is going to be the way most people do it, um, just because the computer's probably going to be right next to the console, is using the input, which this computer does not have a line input on it. It has a headphone jack that can double as a mic input, so if you want to monitor the audio through the software, um, that wouldn't work. So that just depends on your computer. If you have a desktop computer, most likely you're going to have um, some sort of line input or mic input. Um, typically, the quality of those aren't going to be quite as high, but uh, on paper it's that way. But in reality, hearing the difference, you probably can't, probably can't tell the difference. So I would say getting it um, the most affordable way into your stream, those are the three options whatever suits your scenario. Um, so the next thing we'll talk about is the dynamic range and compression and the importance of that um, in your mix. Um, if you think about, you know, most people are kind of probably gonna be watching it on laptop speakers or their phones, um, and the volume only gets so loud on those. Um, so you want your signal to be very hot and not too soft. Um, and this is probably gonna be one of the most um, challenging things because I can't just tell you you need these settings. Every application is going to be different. Um, I can give you a good starting point, um, but just for reference, um, I was going back and listening to some of our older recordings here at Southwest from, I don't know, three, four years ago, and I thought the compression sounded really bad. And, you know, back then I thought it sounded good, but over time I've just slowly been adjusting that to where we're at now. And now I think it sounds good, and you know, in five years from now, I may have tweaked it some more, and I might think now it sounds kind of bad. So it's something that you're going to have to work through um, for your application, for your scenario. One of the ways we can get compressor is doing it directly in the software. So this particular software is OBS. I would guess probably 99% of uh, everyone out there needing to do a setup is probably going to use this software. It's free, it's open source, and it's kind of the industry standard um, for streaming. So this has what they, they call them filters, but they're basically audio effects. And um, we can add a couple different things. We have a compressor, an expander, a gate, a limiter. Um, so we can kind of play with those. And if you're wondering, want some more details about that, um, Audio Buff has a, has a dedicated video for compression. But if I was gonna set this up just, just starting, I would probably put gain in um, first. We'll just leave the names as is. Uh, I'll do a compressor, and then I will do a limiter. So these are in order specific, so if you're out of order, you can click on one and use the arrows here to adjust that. So I'm gonna do the gain first because this particular compressor doesn't have an input gain adjustment, so I can just add that effect beforehand. Um, and that's gonna let me adjust the input volume before it gets to the compressor. So after the gain, we have the compressor. Um, one thing that I kind of dislike about this is there's no kind of metering on this compressor. 
So you don't really have a way to tell except audibly um, what's happening, which if you have um, headphones plugged in, you can monitor that or record it, listen to it, and kind of go back and tweak it. Um, and I'd probably just start where it's at and then, um, you know, kind of play with the controls and, you know, watch, watch that video and try to understand a little bit what it's doing and then just kind of play with it and see um, what you can do with it. Maybe even take an old recording from church and just let it play on your system that's going to be a similar um, sound and just start, just start tweaking it. And what, what I would look for is your audio meter. Try not to let it go um, maybe even below the yellow section, which on this, on this particular meter is 20 dB. Um, so maybe you know, have that as your starting point. When someone's speaking, if it's below that point, um, we need to either adjust the input gain or raise the threshold, lower the threshold, um, and just kind of play around with those settings. Again, I can't tell you what it has to be for your scenario because every, every setup is going to be different. Um, and then last, we have the limiter. Um, by default, it's at negative six decibels. I'm just going to bump that up to uh, negative 0 0.2. So we're just barely reducing, and what that's going to do is if the threshold um, or if the compressor is adding too much gain and it doesn't catch any kind of spikes in the audio, this, this will not let anything go over point two, um, negative 0.2 decibels, and it's going to catch everything. And that'll, that'll eliminate um, any kind of distortion um, as long as the effects themselves aren't distorting another option and this would actually be my preferred choice um, <clears throat> either if you have a digital console this would be built into the digital console or um, if you have analog uh, having um, some type of outboard compressor um, and you just have this in between um, the output of your mixer and your recording source whether that's live stream or um, recording deck tape recorder if anybody still uses those, um, whatever. Um, so th the reason I would prefer this um, is because you're going to get the hottest signal right out of the console and then it's going to already be hot going into the computer. Um, so any kind of noise introduced between the audio source and the computer would be um, minimized because your noise floor is not going to go up if you add more gain here. Um, versus it doing any kind of gain or compression there is just going to raise up any kind of noise that's already in the signal. Um, so this, that's why this would be my preferred choice, but not um, definitely not your only option. Um, so here you can see we're doing, this is actually what we're, you're hearing right now is going through this compressor. Um, this particular one has a, a gate, um, and so I'm actually using that right now so when I speak, you can see that I'm breaking the threshold, so it's disengaging. But when I'm not speaking, it's actually reducing um, the audio signal to help eliminate some of the noise. <clears throat> and then uh, kind of exactly opposite of that, the compressor section, if I break that threshold, then it's going to start to reduce the audio so that when I'm speaking quietly, it's not reducing, but if I was to shout, it would reduce that versus if I'm speaking softly, um, I wouldn't be doing any kind of reduction. So therefore, my dynamic range is going to be um, a smaller, smaller range of, of sound. Let's boil this down to one simple point. We're in a really challenging time in our country. We can be a part of the problem or we can be a part of the solution. I hope this video has been a help to show you that you don't have to have the latest and greatest, but you may have to look through a junk drawer or find somebody that has some gaming equipment. And with a few simple steps, you can help create a better streaming package for your church or your school. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And don't forget to check out some of these other videos we did on Livestream Basics. I'm Jude, and thank you for watching.